This is problem from forecasting chapter that is demonstrated in table 7 and on that page. This is a problem with seasonal adjustment. When there is seasonality within the data, you must adjust for seasonality. Just the smoothing methods or trend, linear trend calculation is not going to be enough. I have um, uh, taken this data and transposed it so that I can show you the graph for it. I will use a scatter, scatter diagram with um, uh, a line through it because this is a trend um, um, calculation and, and these are the time values coming over here. So in this data you can see that clearly there are seasonal patterns that repeat themselves over the years uh, every quarter. If I were to um, right click and add trend line a linear trend line as indicated here, um, you will see that th uh, there's only 7-8% uh, relationship between um, this linear trend line and the data. And the reason for that is because um, there is so much variation in the data as a result of seasonality that um, the line cannot be a good fit. Because we see these repetitive season, seasonal effects, which are essentially movement below and above the trend line um, and around the trend line, um, which repeat themselves um, um, every year in this case, uh, because we have the seasonality, uh, we need to um, somehow measure that seasonal effect and work, in, work it into our calculations so that uh, this line does not have to fit into such wide variations. Um, two things to say about seasonal, seasonal adjustments. Number one, when you want to use this method, you need to have at least two sets of seasons. In this case, we need at least to have two years of data, which have four, the two sets of seasons are quarters, one, two, three, four, which are one set of seasons in year one, and then quarters one, two, three, four, which are set two of seasons for year two. As it happens in this case, we have three sets of seasons, three sets of quarters. So um, quarters one through four. And so we're good uh, in terms of our calculations for seasonal adjustment. Another thing to say is, in this case, the data is collected in quarters, and we believe that there is quarterly, op uh, quarterly effects. However, this data and the annual sales could have been collected in terms of 12 months. Uh, so we could have had 12 uh, columns, each indicating January through December, in which case then three years times 12 months, it would have meant um, uh, 36 data values in our time series. But as it is in this case, we have three years times four quarters, or we have 12 quarters. Now, the approach that your author uh, uses is uh, add up uh, the annual sales, so quarters one through four for year one, and then repeat that, of course, so we know what annual sales are every year. Also, uh, we know what the overall sales are for all of these 12 quarters. So that's the summation of all the 12 quarters, everything in yellow, which is 148.7. You can verify these answers against the book and that table 7 and the calculations on that page. Now, another way of doing this, of course, is just to sum up uh, all the annual sales, which is essentially, oops, which is essentially um, all of the 12 quarters. So either way, you get the same answer, 148.7. It's a totally a matter of perspective. Now, what computation of seasonal effect or seasonal factor, sometimes called seasonal index, has to do with, now that we know quarter one, had three past periods or three past data values for quarter one that we have at our disposal. Let's find out the total for that um, quarter, 
for all quarter ones um, is how much? Well, that's 42. So of all the 148.7 units sold, 42 of them were sold in quarter one. And similarly, we can compute the quarterly sales, total quarterly sales for quarters two, three, and four. Now, the seasonal factors have to do with what proportion of that overall sales, 148.7, what proportion of that is each of the quarter sales? So we compute the seasonal factor for quarter one by taking the total quarter one sales and dividing it by that overall. But in my calculation, I'm going to um, put um, cell reference fixed for um, this 148.7 so that when I copy that, um, it will uh, it will do the calculations correctly. So uh, we can see that the highest seasonal effect was related to quarter four, 37 percent of all the uh, annual sales um, is was made in that quarter, and the lowest seasonal effect is for quarter three, where only 14 percent of the total sales is attributed to quarter three. Now, your book has them rounded off to two decimals, so I'm going to round each of these so that you can follow and compare this to exactly what's in your book. So we have um, these uh, seasonal uh, factors. Rounded. We can, I'll just call, the, call them rounded. Okay, so um, now the next approach is, um, at, at least according to this book, now there are different different books and different authors present the seasonal adjustment somewhat differently. But the method used in your book is what, what I'm going to cover. So now the authors have said, we know that we have three years of data. We know that we, we have the total for those annual sales. So let's go ahead and do a uh, trend line for that overall total annual sales. So here I'm going to just choose those cells and annual sales and I'm just going to do a quick um, and I'll do a line graph because this is again a trend. So if I were to click and add trend line I'm going to get 99% or uh, coefficient of determination, almost 99%. And we get the 4.3x plus 40.97, which is the values that your authors have computed um, in the book. So our regression equation or linear trend line or equation is given by this value. Um, 40.97 plus 4.3 times x. Um, please keep in mind that you could have used the regression function in Excel, data analysis, you could have gone to regression and um, you could have used um, for y range, you could have used these values for x range, you could have used this values, I have used labels, and if I want to put the um, results in this cell, I could say OK, and here I have um, the same intercept and slope um, that we computed using this other method. This one is just quicker to me, I don't know, it may not be for you. Um, so, um, what your authors have done, I'm going to get rid of this now um, to make some room here. Um, what your authors now have done is they've said, okay, um, we know that um, this is the trend equation. And so, how about if we forecast sales for year four? How do we do that? Well, forecast for sales for year four is equal to uh, 40.967. I'm going to round 
0.97 plus 4.3, it's just my regression equation, times 4. Now I'm going to use 4 because I want to predict sales for year 4. If I do that, I get 58.17. That's going to be my sales for this year right here, if I were to extend this line. So the question is, now that I know uh, that's my overall sales for the year, if I want to adjust it for seasonality, I can just uh, use these seasonal factors. So seasonally, uh, I think your book calls it SF, seasonal forecasts are uh, for year four can be computed here, and those would be equal to, we take um, this um, uh, forecast, the 58.17, which is the um, forecast for year four, and I want to fix the cell reference for it, um, times um, the seasonal index for quarter one. And if I copy that, then I get all of these uh, forecasts for quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. And of course, if I round them, I believe your book rounds it to two decimals, so I will do the same. And now these are the same forecasts that you see uh, in the book uh, with minor adjustment in terms of rounding. So this is the method that the book uses. Now in the next video I'm going to show you how we can use this method and um, these calculations to see how good this forecasting method fits the data and what the goodness of the fit is. So watch for the next video in terms of forecast accuracy that we have accomplished using this seasonally adjusted forecasting method. Thank you very much.